Joining us to discuss this is Stephen Stanley, chief U.S. economist at Santander U.S. Capital Markets, along with our own Steve Leisman. And gentlemen, before we get into that, Steve Leisman, you're looking at how changing depositor behavior could also have a real impact on the economy. We're, we're talking specifically about what's happening with money market funds. Yeah, exactly, uh, Dominic. And there's a lot of money slushing around. For you, you have the concern about the bank failures. That seems to be eased, at least for the moment. But the economic fallout from these hundreds of billions of dollars moving around the financial system, it may yet to be felt as money seems to be surging into places where it's not likely to help the real economy on Main Street. Money started leaving the banking system as early as December 2021. It accelerated with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. $600 billion has left the largest 25 banks and $150 billion has left the smaller banks. Where to go? Money market funds were among the big recipients with their assets surging by more than half a trillion. The bulk of that in just the past month. Other funds went directly into treasuries as well. Money market funds, a lot of it kept on deposit at the Fed or in short-term treasuries. Finances the government real well, but not necessarily Main Street. Money's moved out of banks well for two reasons, because of concern about safety in some institutions, but also low interest rates as banks make a choice. They want to keep profits high by not paying up for deposits and lending low in part because they're tightening standards. What's it all mean for the economy? Oxford Economics writes, a sudden tightening in lending standards now would imply a peak drag of 0.7 percentage points on GDP growth later this year or early next. You can't know the extent of the tightening, but for now, more money has ended up in places where it's going to be tougher for those businesses on Main Street to get a loan to start up and expand. Dom? All right. So there's the state of play. Steve Leeson, stick around, please. Stephen Stanley, let's bring you into the conversation. This is a, a, a very, I mean, I, I, the word unprecedented is used way too much these days, but it feels like it because we are unwinding or in the process of trying to normalize what is arguably the biggest economic experiment in the history of financial markets, and that is the zero interest rate policy we've had for more than a decade. Right. Are we to expect these types of growing pains, these types of dislocations as a way of getting out of some of those policies? Do people pour money into money market funds that buy short-term treasuries and that's going to force rates lower at the same time the Fed is trying to raise them? Yeah, well, I mean, to take a step back from the analysis that Steve gave, part of the reason for some of the things that are going on is because, of course, the Fed had pumped trillions of extra dollars into the economy through QE, and now it started to take that out. So there was a tremendous amount of excess liquidity sitting in the financial system basically doing nothing. And whether it ends up as bank reserves put back to the Fed or in money market funds, which, as Steve said, doesn't necessarily, um, you know, fund Main Street, you know, the fact is that those excess uh, funds or eventually the Fed would like to drain a lot of that out. So, so, Steve, I mean, if you take a look at the way things are playing out right now, it was arguably that the proximate cause, if you want to call it that, for this move into money market funds was the bank failures that we've seen. Right. There was a crisis of confidence. People felt like they wanted the full faith and credit of the government backing their money. So they go into treasuries, a.k.a. money market funds. Mm -hmm. What's the knock on effect for the economy? You mentioned the deposits that are not going into funding projects is that the worst of it, or can we expect deeper feelings? I think the big issue here, the big question, is how much our lending standards going to change. Are businesses going to stop lending to corporations, to businesses, and to, and to households because they're so worried about their deposits running off that they don't want to tie up the money that way? Is that, though, just the regional banks? Because we have seen a lot of real-world evidence that shows that many of the deposits, if they are fleeing, are leaving regional banks and going just to people like J.P. Morgan, Bank right. of America, or Citi, those are still banks. They just don't do the type of lending that, say, regional banks do. Right. Well, that, I think there are two issues. One is if the composition of where deposits sit in the banking system changes, are the lending policies of those new banks that are getting, or the banks that are getting that new money different than for um, the banks that, that lost the money? So, for example, if very small banks that service smaller communities do a lot of loans in their local communities, if they were to lose their funds all to the money center banks, then, you know, maybe some of those local businesses don't get serviced. Um, we'll see to what degree that happens. I think for, for now, what we've seen is mostly the, the runoff has come in a spe very specific subset of banks. It hasn't been across the board necessarily.